All right, Paul Howe, CSAT Way. Starting to make our footprint on YouTube, kind of exploring the channel. And uh, what we're going to do is try to keep the videos at 10 to 12 minutes. And so what we want to do is put out good information concisely. Try to keep the language clean. Now, a couple of times you, uh, we'll come out there and we'll may, may say something that offends somebody. Sorry about that. Uh, if it really bothers you, move on. And so not a big deal. I read all the comments. And so I go down, try to give a thumbs up. Now that we're getting sometimes 400 plus on one video, uh, there's a lot to keep up with. Now, I, take, I track a lot of the information, and I look at it, and I go, all right, what's important? What, what are they asking? And so I try to answer that in videos. Now, videos, what will happen is it'll take uh, sometimes an 8-hour to 10-hour man hours to shoot a series of videos. When I say series, video itself may be 10 to 12 minutes, but we've, if we're going outside, we're prepping ranges, we're prepping weapons, we're dry firing, we're rehearsing, and then the video editing. So there's a lot to this. Right now, we're going to look at uh, dropping a YouTube video every probably two weeks. So we'll see how that works out for you. Now, when you make comments, I know there's going to be trolls out there. And I talked to my buddy Reed, Fowler Ridge, and he goes, ah, ignore him. Ah. Personally, I don't. And what I do is I'm not going to snipe back per se, but I, you've got to stand up to him. What happens is in this country right now is we, have, we, we will let the – the opposing side, so to speak, the liberals, push, 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 and we haven't stood up. And so you can see where we're, we're at. And so it's, it's a no-go. In the military, when I was a little, uh, you know, private, uh, wouldn't take shit from other privates. Sorry about that. It already slipped out. So I w we would solve problems. And sometimes it went to fists. But it uh, it fixed a lot of things, believe it or not. It corrected behavior and attitudes. Uh, so right now people get comfortable hiding behind a computer screen. Uh, we do our, our due diligence and research. I look to see who they are. But I'll tell you, unless you've been in the uh, two-way range, uh, don't make absolutes. Uh, you've got to do this, do this. You need to bring more ammo. Uh, my basic load in the day, seven to eight mags was fine. But I also carried frags, you know, if it was 203 or shotgun. So my baseline weight was 228. My combat weight was 310. And I didn't have chicken plates. And Coil splashed up a picture, Somalia. So you've got to hump all that weight and fight a, a G and a loincloth and AK and two, two magazines and still be maneuverable. So for the folks that haven't done it, don't, I don't want to hear your comments. Uh, you go somewhere else in fantasy land or one of these other forums and live your life. But uh, I'm going to try to bring in the reality-based information. What does that mean? Well, we had World War I, II, Korea, Vietnam, and a bunch of other skirmishes in between. The trainers in those generations tried to give back a little bit, but uh, one of the, the viewers made comments and put the comments out of, this is, this is a World War II training film. Okay, it's a generic template. So I look at who put it out, colonels and lieutenants, people that could write. The actual guys on the ground with the technical skills may not have had any, any say. When I look at the squad lined up in a ditch, what happens is there is a squad leader behind on a knee. It's an open area. Any bullets missing those guys on the line are going to hit that squad leader. So it's not realistic. There are tactics and techniques down at ground level that we forget and we relearn them in blood. So with, with these videos, what I want to do is give you lessons learned to a certain extent. Yes, it'll be open source, but I won't get into too much into tactics. You want tactics, you come visit me. But we can talk generalities and uh, Kind of give back to whoever, whether it be the historians that watch this, want to know the lineage to past soldiers, future soldiers, current soldiers, and give them information that uh, they can maybe or maybe not put into play. So it takes me to the, the technical skills. Well, the technical skills, we had a rifle AIT. We do low light. So two different platforms, baseline, local builds, nothing fancy about them. One's a one and seven barrel, one's a one and eight. So I shot the targets because people asked, what happens when you move your sight back? So I'll give you the answers when I found out. I won't take a student's runs away in a class, but I'll shoot with them on the firing line. And when they start doing their modules, I'll sneak over to another range and maybe do some work, find work, so to speak. What I did is the green one. I took it, moved the front sight all the way forward. 
shot it, shot it again, but I moved it back. And what happens is that spot right there gave me the best zero. I don't know if this rail or forend is true. It just seemed like the groups opened up. So I'm going to shoot it back here, and I'll give you a couple more reasons in a minute. Now, this rifle here, we'll call it the Black AR, shot it here, shot a nice tight group. That's a 10 ring. Went back to that white dot, and then it opened up. And then I went back, forward, shot there. That's where I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run it. So I'm going to run both these in different uh, places. It's not a big deal. You've got to know your weapon system. You, it's okay to go ahead and experiment. You need to do that. Put the mileage in. I'm getting good trigger time every time I lay down and shoot these weapons, these platforms. So you should too. Now, some little things. Coil splash up some pictures. On these rifles, what I'm experimenting with is a front sight and getting a little yellow dot there right below the crisp outline. The reason I have this marker in, in my hand is I go ahead and blacken the top of the tip of the front sight. I want a good crisp outline. So the final zero on this gun, Koi can splash up. It's a nice tight group at 100. And what I do is I come up and I shoot center hole a lot of times. So I'll come up here, bump it, break the shot. Come up here, firm up, bump it, break the shot. Come up here, firm it, bump it, break the shot. I don't like my eye going back and forth. Now, people say iron sights is gesture tech. It's not. It's, it's a training tool. To me, it's like going into the gym and having free weights or machines or body weight to get you to a certain physical fitness level to pass the test. If it works, it works. Now, I've taken iron sights into combat more because of the platform. What that means is I had a 203 one time, a major conflict, and then the other one, I had a shotgun underneath. I did not want to add extra gear. The aim points that day were, were not reliable. They would milk up. That means they weren't waterproof. And so they were permanently fixed to the gun. But what happens there is you end up having to get a new rifle sometimes because you can't unscrew it in a short amount of time in combat. So irons have never failed me. I use them. Uh, they work just fine. I add a hollow sun at night. And what I'll do is I have it referenced, index points, and I will shoot through my iron sights with a dot. And all I've done is taken it and I dial it to my front sight post. And I'll do that in the, what I'll show you that is, is in the low light video. Now, again, don't get excited. They all work. Use, I believe in iron sights. They've never failed me. And I know you've got irons, you've got red dots, you've got three powers. I've seen four powers, people taken into room. We're going to do a video on three power and speed and CQB. People, people go, have asked, well, can you show, I won't show CQB, but I'll show you a flat range and you can make your hits, a nice tight group. You just have to practice with it. People are trying to buy proficiency. You can't buy proficiency. You have to put the mileage in. It's like saying, I want to run a marathon. That's nice, but you have to get the shoes, you have the socks, the, you have to get working out for maybe a year sometimes to get to that level. You just can't go, boom, I'm going to do this. Now, red dots, yes, they're faster. Are they better? No. They're a mechanical device you're adding to a weapon that somebody already wants to shortcut the learning curve. So I'm torn on it. The three powers that I use when I have on other rifles, they have a hard edge reticle. And so if the light goes out, that reticle will work. The problem I find out on those is they blend in sometimes the black. As far as irons and your eyes, did an RK, both eyes, 1986, LASIK, 2002, on this right eye. Right now I have cataracts, the baseline. You know, they're, they're starting to creep in it. It happens with age. I, I am blessed to be this old. A lot of people have never made this age. So, But I still shoot irons, and I do more dry practice because what happens is I believe the eye is a muscle. And you practice, and you have to practice seeing. So a dry fire will help you exercise that eye. A lot of people get the, uh, I guess, astigmatisms. And so they see what, they, what they're telling me is a, uh, a lump of grapes, like on a red dot. So you have to figure out what works best for you. In the day, it didn't matter. You, if you could shoot it and make it work, you could bring it. Again, a lot of times I just did the iron sights. My unwritten rule on the team was five headshots, 100 yards, if sick target. Irons, optics, whatever you want to bring. I'm fine with that. 
If you can do that, then you are, you know, squared away. So I hope this helps you. We have to pass the lessons learned down because what a lot of the generations, if you if you go to the World War One, World War Two, the Vietnam, each generation had people that stayed up, stayed behind and repassed lessons learned. Well, the lessons learned they, they passed was a lot of times I got mine, you didn't get yours, I'm not gonna you gotta learn this, you gotta do it the hard way like I did. Well, that's not the right solution. Uh, we pay for that attitude and blood. So we've got to pass information down. Uh, again, make comments, I read them, I look at them, I say, all right, this is worthy, so I'll bring it. And the, the last point is, the front of this weapon, for you guys that are paying attention, has a GAD on it. It's a glass assault tool. And the, the tactical question is, why would I use that? Well, here's the deal. If you look at Nashville, coil will splash in. They're standing in front of glass doors on an active shooter. That is not a good tactic. With, with this platform, I have a little bit of leadway right here, not boogering up my front sight, to break through the glass, create a port that I can cover my breaching team tactically while they're solving problems. Otherwise, we're just a, a potential bullet magnet. So all these different variables and the different you know, problems you're going to encounter in the world, you've got to look at. So be flexible out there. Before you snipe, think. Uh, it's, I'd rather have you ask a question than snipe a comment because that just, like I said, it magnifies your ignorance. Hope these uh, tips help you. You take care, be safe. I'll catch you on the range.